You know, I often tell our students that are so busy and so hectic and so frazzled as they run around campus, if I could do one thing, I would yell out to them, stop, and I would tell them, walk into Dahlgren Chapel. So many people of different faiths sneak into Dahlgren for some quiet. That's why it's a spiritual home for uh, all of our community. The sight of Dahlgren um, is a symbol of, of uh, what every Catholic university should be, the, the Catholic life in the center of the university. There's a way where the quad is sort of an antechamber to Dahlgren Chapel, and as you walk through that quad, you know you're going somewhere special. At the heart, geographically at the heart, architecturally in the heart, surrounded by the buildings that are most important to the ordinary operations of a university. And what do we put at the center of that spot? A chapel. And we're, we're very happy with our, with our old, slightly small heart, um, which is pumping, though, boldly and firmly and rapidly and is sustaining this university in ways that we all cannot really measure in the end. That we as a community are investing, are putting time, talent, and treasure into a building like Dahlgren Chapel says something about, again, where our heart is. The very great dignity of that chapel lies in the beauty of the windows and the ceiling and in being aware of the history, it preserves echoes of the very, very early foundations of Georgetown University. If you're interested in that Catholic identity, it makes sense to make sure the chapel uh, at the center of the campus is uh, in its best possible form. What makes this chapel grand and unique and magnificent is its connection to a community. Because people bring into any chapel their own hopes and dreams and griefs and sorrows and struggles and aspirations. Yeah, no, I think if you walk around this campus, you would be hard pressed to find somebody that won't tell you they've had an important moment in Dahlgren Chapel. There's a closeness there, uh, so that's where they want to be. I've done a number of what you might call second generation weddings to the sons and daughters of folks that I married before. So far, I haven't done any third generation. They'd be a little scary, but that would mean I'd be around in a whole long time. It's the most natural thing in the world for someone to want to come back to a place that's already sacred for them, to make it more sacred as their own life progresses. Some of the most powerful times are funerals. I always say there are two things you can do mourning the loss of a dear friend. You can be with those who mourn, and you can pray. And for us, that happens in Dalton. You know, this is a place that people come when they know there are these key moments and where they want to be able to be in touch with God and with those deeper questions, those deeper senses of themselves. They know that in the quiet of Dahlgren, they will find an answer. So they keep coming back. Um, it touches all our lives. Well, you know, you can tell a lot about a place by what it prioritizes and what it chooses to do. And here at Georgetown, we're saying the most important thing in the life of the university right now is reaffirming our spiritual core. To make Dahlgren a more beautiful place says something about where the heart of this community is now and where it will be into the future. All of you who have donated to Dahlgren have donated because you went to Mass there, you, you prayed there, you, you, you got married there. You, you, there's something that that, that that space has meant something to you. And you wanted, donors have wanted, to ensure Dahlgren stands and lives and breathes vibrantly for another hundred years, for generations to come.